really well that leads to a, a government becoming a petrostate. state. And there's some other very good analysis of how it, within petrostates states, democracy declines. Okay, so let's go back to energy policy. So in this whole development of the oil sense, there was no intention to have an energy policy that ran along with it. Because if you had that, you might want to pay attention to things like energy security. And I remember adding that was after I was elected, so I was sitting at, uh, at the uh, House of Commons Committee on refining capacity in Canada. I think I'm very interested in refining capacity in Canada and pipelines and all kinds of things. And I asked one of the um, experts who was there from, from one of the large uh, energy oil companies, what would happen in terms of energy security if the OPEC nations had another embargo? What if, for some reason, supply to Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, Newfoundland, and Labrador, what if it suddenly stopped with the imports from Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Kazakhstan? What if those stopped? How would Eastern Canada get any product? And the answer was, there'd be no problem at all as long as we get those pipelines through British Columbia, we'll put super tankers and we'll run them down through the Panama Canal and around them up those Eastern Canadians. You think, okay, well, if you were thinking, again, if you're thinking like a country, that's not what, that's not what was right to mind. Okay. So, going back to the project of the oil sets, we're now up to just under 2 million barrels of oil a day being produced from the Athabasca region. Now, I use the term 2 million barrels of oil a day because that's a unit of measurement. But I need to back up and say they're not producing oil. And they're not producing crude. Really wish the media would pay attention to the language around this. Oil is something that flows. You with me? Crude can move on its own. It flows. Bitumen is a solid, pretty much. It's not, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. I've got a jar of it in my office in Ottawa. If I didn't think I wasn't allowed to bring it on airplanes without risk, I would have brought it to show you because you could hold it upside down and shake and it's not going anywhere. It's a solid. So, anyway, there are about just under 2 million barrels of bitumen a day, which isn't actually oil or crude. And up until 2008, there were plans to build upgraders in northern Alberta. Up until 2008, there was no planning pressure. Nobody talked about Keystone or Enbridge, um, Northern Gateway, or Kinder Morgan, Trans Mountain Pipelines, or Energy East, or none of these were under discussion. So, what was the discussion? Up until 2008, the financial collapse, which is something else we could talk about at length, but anyway, what caused the financial collapse and how did they all get away with it? And why didn't people go to jail for gambling with other people's money and collapsing the economy? But that's a, a story for another day. The, up until the 2008 financial crisis, there were plans to build upgraders in northern Alberta. Now what an upgrader does is it takes solid bitumen and converts it to synthetic crude. So it's not the same crude as you'd get from crude oil off Hibernia. But unlike bitumen, it flows. And then it could go to, the plan was, refineries potentially elsewhere in Canada, or through existing pipeline routes. Because there certainly are existing pipeline routes down into the US to refineries there. Um, I, you may not think it matters about refineries and pipelines. It matters to me because I'd like to see an energy policy. And if it was an energy policy, it would include energy security so that Canadians knew that there was, if we're an energy superpower, we're at least looking after our own needs before we ship it somewhere else. The other piece that's really missing in all this, of course, is, uh, well, I mean, just piece before I go off the climate piece, which is next, is the jobs issue. Why do you suppose all the unions in northern Alberta are opposed to the Keystone Pipeline? Okay. 2008 financial crisis. Up until the 2008 financial crisis, there were up upgraders planned for Alberta. At, you know, during the financial crisis, all of the investment that was planned for Northern Alberta sort of went on hold on the shelf for a while. And then after the financial crisis sort of receded, things like Shell, Jack Pine Mine, Phase 2 came back, whole bunch of proposals for expanded projects came back, 
my, you know, investors from the People's Republic of China showed up buying up oil sands operations. The one thing that didn't come back was the upgraders. Instead, we had Keystone XL and a proposal that we are not going to upgrade from solid bitumen to synthetic crude in northern Alberta, which is frankly quite a lot of jobs. We're going to put it in a pipe and send it down to the Gulf of Mexico <coughs> coast where there are both refineries that were built for Venezuelan bitumen, heavy crude bitumen from Venezuela, so they can handle it, and also, of course, a deep water port to stick it in tankers to send it elsewhere, which is really what this is about, shipping it out to other refineries, not even in North America. Now, having told you bitumen is a solid, you're probably wondering what they plan to do to make it run in a pipe. So, this is something that I don't think gets explained. I'm really sorry, I hope this isn't really what you didn't what you want to hear bitumen and pipelines and tankers and why I'm not just ranting about how bad it is that they're doing the Athabas oil sense at all, but I wanted to try to get the basics out here. So to make the bitumen flow, all the pipeline projects currently being proposed in Canada involve a two-way traffic of hazardous material. Because first, they have to ship something called diluent into Alberta to stir it into the bitumen on a proportion of something like 30% diluent to 70% bitumen to get it to flow in pipes. Diluent is not a term of science. They might as well call it magic goop. It's just what the industry likes to call a fossil fuel product which is otherwise valuable for other purposes. It's mostly it's a it's a compensate, it's what you might think is like naphtha. So it's naphtha to which they add benzene, cancer-causing benzene, another additive to this project. And they often add butane, lighter fluid. So they stir all that up and they put that in. Now, the Enbridge project, on their evidence, the National Energy Board, say they plan to buy the diluent from Saudi Arabia. So there'd be tankers loaded with diluent making their way up the BC coast to go in pipelines, Enbridge wants to build twin, a twin pipeline operation. So at one end, you put the diluent in to ship it up to northern Alberta from OPEC countries. And then the other one, you stir it all in and it comes back. Of course, the same tankers aren't sitting around waiting for it. So one set of tankers come in to deliver the diluent, go away. Another set of super tankers are supposed to come in to get them at, and pick it up once it's well, oh, and I, you know, again, I have words. This is one of the ones they invented. If you were in the industry, if you were going to take bitumen, and you're going to mix it with diluent, and then they call the product diluent. Okay, I just, I just, I, I think these guys are such cares. Anyway, so then you got the diluent, and you're going to put that in Keystone XL, and you're going to put it in, and, and by the way, these are one or the other. And by the way, it's not one or the other, or pipelines versus rail. We start looking at the project they have in their, in their minds right now, it's every single one of the pipelines I mentioned, plus rail. We start adding it up, what they need to move the bitumen out of northern Alberta. So, without processing it there, which is a key part of the current plan. Get as much as you can, triple the levels of production. That's what Stephen Harper said they want to do. They want to go to six million barrels of oil a day by 2035 and ship it all out for processing somewhere else. So back to, oh, I have one of the diluent story I wanted to mention. Um, when the five train cars were hanging over the Bow River during the Calgary floods, and everybody covered the fact that they're loaded with hazardous material, and poor Nye Benchy, and, and I mean, that was a, he just thought, I, I talked to him, I, I, he, I think he's Canada's best man, but maybe there's better ones somewhere, we sure know where there are worse ones, but anyway, he, he, he was just going to get a break, right? And he was maybe going to have a nap, because he'd been going for days and days and days, and then suddenly there's train cars on a bridge that's collapsing over the Bow River, loaded with hazardous material. It was diluent. It was diluent on rail being shipped to northern Alberta to stir in with the bitumen so that it would flow. Okay, so back to what we would do if we were planning a decent energy policy. A decent, a national energy strategy for Canada would start with, I believe, 
value-added jobs, so let's not ship out raw product. 